Now there's many situations where you may want to create simple listing type websites, but you don't want to put the time, effort and expense of building something totally bespoke from scratch using a page builder. Today, I'm gonna to show you how we can take the Bloxy theme alongside advanced custom fields, combine those together and create a really simple listing type website. You can take this as far as you want or keep it as simple as you want, but the fundamental skills will stand you in good stead when you want to work on a project like this. If you're ready, join me and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do all of this right now. Okay, so this is our starting point. This is the basic listing. We've got a couple of properties inside there and just normal title, the date it was posted, those kinds of things. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and add in our custom meta fields. We're gonna be using advanced custom fields, the free version. I have the pro installed, but we're not gonna cover any of the pro features. So this is totally and utterly free. So let's go over into the dashboard. I've already opened up the field group section for advanced custom fields. And the first thing we're gonna do is give this a new name by creating a new field group. So let's just add that in. We'll choose add new. First thing we're gonna do is give this a name and we're gonna call this property details. Now, before we create the actual fields themselves, the custom meta fields we're going to be using, let's take a look at how we set the rules up for where these particular meta fields are going to be working. In other words, how we're going to associate them and where we're going to associate them. So to do that, we've got the location section. As you can see, this is set up at the moment for post type is equal to posts. And that's perfectly fine. In this example, that's exactly what we want. But before we close that down, let's take a quick look at some of the other options we have. If we open this up, you can see we can choose from a lot of different locations locations, posts, post templates, pages, those kinds of things. If we create custom post types, they will also be listed inside here. So we have a lot of scope for where we can actually include our custom meta fields. Then we've got the actual qualifier. Is it equal to or not equal to? So you can get really creative by using that. And then finally, depending upon the option that you choose, you get the third and final set of options. Because you set this as a post type, we can choose between posts, pages, and in this example, content blocks. We'll leave this as post. Now, if you wanted to create additional rules to get really granular with this, you can do that by choosing and, you can add additional rule groups, lots of great options. We're gonna leave that as it is though for now. Underneath, you've got some additional options for what you want to enable, disable, and how you want things to lay out. We're gonna leave those as they are because I don't think they're particularly important in this example. Now we're gonna go ahead and create our new custom meta fields. So the first thing we're gonna do is click on add field. We're gonna give this a name. So the first name is going to be property price. You'll see once we click underneath, the field name will automatically fill out, but you can change that if you want to, just knowing that if you want to have a space, you've got to separate that either with an underscore or with a separator, like the dash sign. Field type, we're gonna change this over to be number because we're dealing with a numeric value in this example. And we're gonna set this to be required and we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna simply set prepend and drop in the currency symbol we're gonna be using in this example. I'm based in the UK, so we're gonna be using the pound symbol. This won't show up anyway other than in the dashboard, but it's a good way of letting people know what it is they're actually filling out. Next up, let's close this down and create another field. So we say add another field and we're gonna say this is gonna be property location. Again, we can click and it'll automatically pre-fill that out. Text is perfectly fine. We're gonna set this to be required. And if you wanna set any other ones up, we could do that. We're gonna leave them as they are though for now. So if you wanted to, you could carry on doing this and creating more and more custom meta fields and associating those with our posts. For this example, let's keep this relatively simple and just use these two values. Once we've done that, we've done everything we need now to create our custom meta fields. Let's hit publish and we've now created them. If we hop over into the post section, view all of our posts. And once we're inside there, we can open any post up. And once that's opened up, if we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see there's our property details. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and fill out the details for this particular property. So we'll say this one is valued at half a million, and we're gonna say the location of this property is going to be in London. We'll just simply update our post to add those new pieces of meta information in, and we can repeat this process now on any of the existing posts we have or any new posts that we add in. With that being done, we've now set everything up so we're ready to hop over into Bloxy and start to customize things. To do that, we're gonna simply head over to Appearance and we're gonna choose the option for Customize. Now, once you open this up, Bloxy has a lot of great options. It's a really well thought out customizer. You can see down the left-hand side, we have lots of different options and what we're interested in is the post type section. So you can see underneath the post type section, we've got three different sections. You've got the blog posts, you've got the single post, and you've got the categories. 
we can customize the layout of the features of each of these different sections. Now, if you create a custom post type, for example, you may create one called properties. That would automatically be added into this customizer for Bloxy, and you'd have those same three options, but specific to that custom post type layout, so the templates associated with it. So you could do the same thing inside there if you wanted to. So let's take a look at the blog post, because that's currently what we're looking at on screen right now. Let's click that and open it up. You can see the first thing we have is a very simple set of layouts that we can choose from to kind of get the ball rolling. So you can see at the moment we've got this first option which is the simple layout. However, if you wanted to, you could change this to any of the other options and you can see it'll update on screen in real time and show us exactly what this is going to look like. These already look pretty cool. What we're going to do though is we're going to set this up to be the simple option because I quite like the look of that. It gives us plenty of scope for some more space. Okay, so once we've done that, now we can go ahead and we can customize various aspects of this. For example, if we wanted to, we can put in the blog title, and you can see that will pop the blog title at the top. For this example, we're not going to worry too much, but if you wanted to come in and customize it, once you click on the little arrow to the side of that enabled option, you now get even more options. So you can drill down into the design options inside Bloxy. Let's come back out of that and disable it. We can control the number of posts. We can control whether there's a sidebar, pagination, those kinds of things. But what we want, though, is the cards options. Now, if you're unsure what a card is, if you look at what we've got on screen at the moment, we've got a picture on the left-hand side, we've got some meta information like the post title, the date it was published, those kinds of things. Each one of those individual blocks is a card. So we've got two cards displayed on screen at the moment. It's basically the WordPress loop. What we can do is we can click on the arrow, we can go ahead and we can customize exactly what's going to be displayed inside you, including adding in custom meta fields. So if we take a look, let's go top down. You can see we've got three different card types to choose from. We've got the simple, the boxed and cover. If we choose simple, you can see it is exactly as the name suggests, a very simple layer, very similar to the box, but without any of the nice fancy details. We've already seen boxed. If we take a look at cover, you can see that now puts the text over the top. It doesn't really work too well in this example. Let's switch back to boxed. Now if we take a look underneath, we've got the card elements. Now the card elements are basically everything you can see inside each individual card. So if at the moment we've got title, we've got post meta, featured image, and excerpt. And if we expand any of these out, you can see we can customize various different aspects of it. The post meta gives us lots of options to choose exactly what meta information is going to be included. So if we wanted to include the author, we could just enable that by clicking on the little I symbol, and you can see that will display the author directly inside our card. Pretty cool, very easy. These are totally repositionable. So if we want to change the stacking order of these, we can do exactly that. All really, really cool. But what we're interested in is this final option that says ACF field. Now, if we expand this out, you can see it says property price. And you can see we've got before, after, and fallback. So if you're coming from a tool like Elementor, you're probably familiar with the before, the after, and the fallback. You can put things before the value, you can put things after the value, and you can have a fallback just in case nothing has been filled out. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. At the moment, it just says half a million. Half a million what? Let's just put in before. We'll just put in the pound sign. And you can see now that puts the pound sign in. But we can go one further. Let's just say price. And you can see now we've got price set at half a million. Pretty cool. If you wanted to put something after, and we can say O-V-N-O, -O, or very nearest offer, you can see that will be inserted in there. Put a space in, and you can see that's now added in there. Now, you might be thinking, well, there's only one ACF field option inside there. What about the extra fields that we've created? Well, that's okay, no problem at all. We can just simply duplicate or clone this item, and we now have another option. So we've got ACF field two. So we can now expand this out. We can change this from property price and choose property location, and we can change this to, we can get rid of the after, and you can see we've now got location London. So let's just put a colon and a space in there. Now it makes a lot more sense. Very, very easy to do. And again, we can very easily reorder these to get them exactly as we want. So now we've got the, lo the location before the price. Now, if you want to, you can come into the design side of things, and now you can control the styling. So the colors, those kinds of things are going to be used, card background, card borders, making sure that you get this exactly the way that you want. If we hop back out of this cards option and we change the design layout, for example, we'll go for this option. 
you can see all our current information is still inside that section. Well, let's go into the post meta. Let's disable or delete those two fields. Let's just disable them for now. We can use them again if we want to. Okay, so now we've cleaned up our post meta section, but you'll see inside our card elements, we also have ACF field at the bottom. Now we can do exactly the same thing inside there. We can enable this for the first time. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see it's pulled in the first meta field that we have, which in this example is the price. So now we can just expand that out. If you want to put a custom label inside there, you can do exactly that. And that'll pull in the label from the ACF meta field. So you could use that if you wanted to, or we could disable it. And we can just put in property price, put the pound sign in and give that a second to update. And there we go. So now we've got the property price inserted into that section. And again, we can just duplicate this if we want to. Close this down, expand, choose the property location, remove the before text. And if we wanted to, again, we could use that label value. And you see property location inserted directly inside this. So pretty cool. Or we can customize this to exactly what we want. We say property location, London. So now we've created custom meta fields. We've inserted those into our design. So our listings now have this custom meta information inserted. So let's go ahead now and publish this so we commit those changes. Let's hop over to the front end of our site and take a look at that. So let's refresh what we started off with. And you can see there's our customized version of this. You can see there's our property price, property location, those kinds of fields inserted inside there. Okay, so that's really relatively simple and straightforward. But what about when you go into the actual property itself? How do we go and add this information into that? Well, let's do just that. Let's select one of these properties. And that takes us over now into the property layout. Let's go back out of the card options. And this time we're gonna choose the single post. And now we're gonna be editing the single post template inside Bloxy. Again, you can see we've got a selection of predefined layers that we can pick and choose from. So at the moment we're looking at the narrow width, but we could easily go for the normal width if we wanted to. And you can see that now shows us in the normal width layout. If you want to include sidebars, you could do just that. Let's set this back to the narrow width. Oh, I quite like the look of that. So now what we can do is we can customize the entire look and feel of this and also go ahead and add in our custom fields to various different parts of the design. So at the moment, we've got a very, very simple layout. Let's disable the post title. Once we do that, you can see that now removes it. If we come down, we can also enable and disable various components. So for example, the featured image, we can disable that. If you want to, we can disable the share box. But once you enable various different components inside blocks, so you'll see you get this little pop-out arrow and that allows us then to go in and customize various different aspects. So for example, let's go back to our post title and enable that, open this out, and we can now choose from two different designs. At the moment, we've got a very simple and not a particularly nice looking layout for this particular website. Let's choose the second option, the type two, and this will pull in an image at the top of our design. You can see this already looks a lot better. It's a lot cooler. We've got this nice image at the top. You can customize this. You can see what we need to do is click on the edit and we can go ahead and edit any aspects of that. Hopping into design, you can see we can choose the title font color. We can adjust the image overlay, container background and so on. So at the moment, I'm gonna set this title font color. We're gonna set this from one of the predefined colors and you can see that now shows up a lot better. Let's go back to general. And again, you can see we've got these elements. And again, you can see we've got the ACF field. Now, bearing in mind, this is all inside the post title section of our single template. So let's go in and enable the ACF field. And you can see that now pulls in the first value property price. Again, we can expand this out and we've got all those same options inside you, the label, the fallback, the before, the after, all those things. So again, let's just go ahead and put property price in. We put our pound sign in. Sometimes it takes a couple of seconds for this to refresh and maybe you need to refresh the actual previewer inside the customizer, but don't worry, it will show up on the front end of the site. If you do the same thing again, we can just clone this if we want to and you can see there's our ACF field too. We can pull that back up and we could go ahead now and we can change that over to the property location and do exactly the same thing inside there. Okay, so we've now created two custom meta fields. Problem with this is it looks a bit rubbish because everything is stacked on top of each other. So let's go ahead and do like we did before. Let's just disable both of these. And this time we're gonna use the post meta like we did previously. Let's enable this, let's expand it out. And what we can do is we can now go ahead and take off any of the options that we don't want. So we might not want the author. At the end of the day, you're selling property, the author doesn't matter. Publish date could be useful, but we've also got our ACF fields. So let's just set our ACF field, property price. That's perfectly fine. And we'll just again, 
fill out the values you want inside there. If you want to, you can choose an icon as well. So that's pretty cool, you can do that. And again, we can clone our item and we can create another one. So this time we're gonna expand this out, change it from property price to location, and just put in property location and a colon. So now we've created something a little bit more unique. Let's go ahead and find something like a map icon if I can find something. So now we've created a much more unique layout. We've pulled in dynamic ACF meta fields into our design and all inside Bloxy. We haven't used any third party tools, just advanced custom fields and Bloxy. Pretty cool that you can do these together. So now if we publish this, let's hop back over to our test site. Let's go in and take a look at one of our properties and see the end result. So there's our sample property, the date it was posted, the property price, the property location, and then any other information we want to place in using Gutenberg to edit the content of this and create something truly unique. This is one of the things that I really like about using Bloxy as a theme. It has so many well thought out and implemented features. Yes, there's still scope for more things. I'd love to see more control over those ACF meta fields and positioning those kinds of things. But the fact you're just using a theme on its own is pretty impressive. Now, as always, all the applicable links for everything I've covered are in the description below. And if you want to learn more about using Bloxy, I'll check out this or this video next. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats. And until next time, take care.